Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Johanna. For those of you who are new here, welcome. For those of you who are returning, welcome back. In today's video, I'll be doing this month's edition of Art Journey UK's Random Color Generator. And if that is of interest to you, please stay tuned. Okay, so this is the second video that I filmed today and my voice is off for some reason. I, f I feel fine, but it, it feels scratchy. So if you've noticed that or if I'm extra husky, that's why. So we're gonna do um, Lily's random color generator uh, for this month in this book right here. Now, when she made this challenge, I don't know if she envisioned it to be um, an ongoing thing, but I enjoy the process. So it's certainly going to be an ongoing thing uh, for me. So if you're interested, I will link um, Lily's channel below. I will link Pricey Colors because she actually tagged me to do this and I'm very thankful that she did. Uh, and I will also rank, uh, link uh, Sonia's channel, Sonia Mix Media, because she is doing an entangled uh, hashtag for this month. Now, I don't know how I'm going to schedule this out, so it might actually be <laughs> already in May when you see this video. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, um, but yeah, I just wanted to link um, all of those channels, especially Sonia's, because that's the reason why I chose to work out of this book here. So with the random color generator, uh, the way that I do it is I'm going to use five different mediums and I'll tell you what those five mediums are in just a minute. And then I will have a uh, secret weapon. And between those things, that's how I'm going to finish a page. And so I will have one distress ink, three alcohol markers, one glitter or glaze pen or moonlight pen, just something Pentel because that's all in the same cup. And then I'll show you my secret weapon at the end. I don't know that I'm going to finish this with you guys. I don't know that I'm not, uh, but you'll definitely see the completed product in my completed pages for April. So let's get started. Now, I don't know if the glare is insane because there is a plastic cover. I have moved these into these. I had these for a while, but I was storing these in that little drawer I showed you last month, but that's where my watercolors are now. So I thought, okay, well, I have these, so go ahead and use these. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And it might be a little awkward. No, no. I'm going to keep them covered. I'm going to shuffle them around with my eyes closed, because I'm only choosing one out of these three. I'm hoping it's a good color. And then I'm gonna open this one, and I'm gonna choose this color. So that's gonna be our Distress Ink. Okay, not bad, not bad. These are my regular set of Ohuhus, and there are other pens in here. There's some Sharpies, there are some Art 101s. Let me just take those out. Now I took them out more so, um, so that it's easier to kind of shuffle this around. Because if I pick one out, I know that it's not the, the pen that I need. Um, so it's, it's less to give it room to move than anything else. So I'm going to pick three of these. Now I already can tell that some of these are from my uh, skin set because there's names on them. Um, all of the regular set that I got uh, only have numbers, but they're gonna stay in there because they're the same shape. So, eyes closed, moving things around. Now, there are certainly colors that I hope I don't get. Not gonna lie. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, now if I choose the clear one, that's the only one that I get to put back because that's not gonna do anything. So we've got number one, we've got number two, and we've got number three. Oh, okay, so those are regular colors. So we're gonna put this away. These are my Pentel pens. So I've got Moonlight's Glaze and uh, Dual Metallic. I'm just gonna kind of swirl these around and then eyes closed. Oh, 
All right, a Moonlight pen again. Color's not too bad, so I'm gonna put this away. Okay, so the page I'm going to be working on with you guys is this one right here. And I should put a blotter sheet, yeah, because I'm using alcohol markers. Okay, so I'm going to approach this in a very specific way. I kind of have an idea of how I want to do this. I obviously don't know how the final result is going to look. I do have this. This is a Holbein pencil case. This is where I put my Distress ink. And I'm just going to put some down. and try not to stick my hand in there. And so I'm going to concentrate on the edges. That's where it's going to get the darkest amount of color. But I will bring some in here just to take away some of the white. but really focus on the outside. And it there ha, there is a bit of a border because that's where the picture stops. If I get outside of that, I'm not gonna be too concerned. And the reason for me doing this video with you guys um, and using this book specifically is, I think sometimes some of these heavily detailed books can be very intimidating. Um, I actually like seeing a, a detailed page. It is my preference. Uh, by way of, of pictures that I choose. But I don't think they have to be intimidating or overwhelming because, I mean, it's your stuff and you can do as much or as little as you want with it. And I know that's always the thing, but I think sometimes people feel like, oh, well, the artist put all this work into it. I should, you know, do it justice by coloring every single thing. I think the artist wants you to enjoy your process um, more than it should stress you out. That's just my personal feelings. I'm just gonna put a little bit more. Again, I want the dark outside to be the darkest. And we're gonna leave that to the side. Um, I don't know that I'm going to be using more of this because of some of the elements that's going on the page. Uh, so yeah, we'll just, we'll call that done. And now let's think about the products that we have. So the yellow, let's see if that does anything against the purple. And I don't know if my lighting is weird. It's certainly going to throw some weird shadows. But I want to pick some elements. Because they don't have the same elements except for the flowers here. Because these swirly things here come down this side. And there's different swirly things here. But the flowers, they're actually flowers on both sides. So... Let's see if adding some yellow to some of these petals. Okay. So we're gonna make these two roses because there's two roses here and they're exactly the same, just a wash of this color. Because we're just trying to make this look interesting. Okay, and we've got this one here. And my Moonlight pen and my secret weapon, I will hold off until last, and I will try to do it in the best order. And I say that because they take a little longer to dry, and I don't want to smudge. <laughs> that's, that's something I, I struggle with. Okay, so just to keep with the flower theme, we're gonna pick some elements to color in yellow. And we will bring yellow in the rest of the page, just because we have very minimal elements. Okay, 
And that's how I would attack something like this. Now for some of the scenes in this one and more so in the landscape one that I have that um, are little vignettes, then I would actually approach that quite differently because then I would just color the little vignette and call it a day. But for something like this where it's a whole picture, because um, I don't consider this a vignette and this a vignette, this is really the focus and then this is just like background noise, um, then something like this just seems uh, totally fine. So again, bringing some yellow to the page. And because I have such limited colors and tools, um, it'll be interesting, at least to me visually, if things like this is, is kind of close because it's touching, but I can mitigate that with some other colors so I'm not too concerned. And then I can either piecemeal color things or I can just color things just like that. And again, I just wanna focus on the flowers. So that's all the flowers here. So on this side, we'll focus on the flowers as well. The shadows are probably insane for you guys, but I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing. And this eerie coloring book, sorry, it's Angela Porter. I actually didn't, I don't think I said that. Um, to me, is isn't very eerie. It's, it's not spooky or scary or anything. There are quite a bit of like spiders and skulls and some Halloween-y type things, but um, I think it's a rather tame coloring book by way of the subject matter. Um, but I think the colors that were just randomly chosen actually should work. And then the secret weapon that I'm going to be using hopefully kind of just ties it and grounds it. Okay, and so that's all the flowers there. Okay, now this yellow and this brown or tan might be similar in scope. So let's just see what this looks like. And yeah, depending, I, I don't know that I'm going to be able to finish this with you guys on camera because I'm not going to color every single thing in but there is still going to be quite a bit that I want to color in just to make it pop and I do want to bring that some down here but these little swirly things are one continuous piece and so in order so I'm not coloring a ton, I would just focus on these little ones. And what I might do is not color the entire thing with you. Because again, that'd probably be quite a long video but show you how I, I would tackle some of these pieces here. And then at the end of the video, um, stop filming, just color, enjoy the process, and then bring you back at the end of the video to show you the completed page, uh, just so that you can see what it looks like. Again, with how this is going to be um, put up on my channel, I don't know exactly when that's going to be. Uh, certainly before my completed pages, because usually I, I seem to roll that out by the middle of the next month. But yeah, I just, I think maybe that might make the, more, the most sense, just because it is quite specific on what I'm doing, and I do want you to see that it is doable. Now in the, in the comments below, if you wanna see something like this where I'm taking a highly detailed page and doing the full thing on camera, regardless how, how long it's gonna be. Because if I'm doing it fully on camera with you guys, I'm not gonna fast forward. I'm going to try to talk through as much as I can, and I'm not going to edit much. 
because I think something like this, if you're going to watch the process, I feel there is value in watching the entire process. So let me know down below if that's something that you're interested in. Okay, so I'll need to think about a little bit more of these because there's not many of the small ones and the small ones are up against each other. And again, I don't want to have just colors in one section. So I can bring a little bit of this. Makes for some interesting layering, I think. And the purple and the yellow and the brown does not look bad to me. Yay. So bring that here. I'll do a little bit more of this brown. And then we'll see what that uh, purpley color looks like. To me so far, the, the colors are quite retro looking, like 70s um, retro. No, I'm not mad at that. Okay, yeah, I certainly need to do a little bit more work with these colors, but those are those two colors. And let's use this one. And let's work in here. Oh, that's a really pretty color. Now I do want to use some of the white space in here. Because again, if you are doing something like this, whether you're choosing it randomly or not, um, if you have very limited colors, then you do need to be a little strategic on where you're placing things. And so using the white of the page can be very advantageous because then it becomes an additional color. Because I do want to play up the frame aspect of this. And I'm not too concerned if I'm going out of the lines. I don't even know if I'd clean it up just because you know, in my mind, I can attribute it to being eerie. And again, I really want to keep the frame aspect of this. And so even in the spaces that I'm not going to color, I will outline the outside of this. Just so that you really know that that's the, the centerpiece and everything else is just background. In fact, I think I might reserve this particular color just for this piece right here. And then the rest of this is just going to be yellow and brown and purple. And in this middle section, we can bring in all of the colors. But again, if I'm being strategic, at least in my mind, this way it does clearly denote the, the two different sections because we still have that Moonlight pen, but I think we'll concentrate on here. And then my secret weapon um, actually is very highly pigmented as well. And so we are gonna be able to introduce more colors. Okay, I think you guys got an idea of that. So let's, actually let's use the secret weapon and let me show you what that is. So I'm going to be using a black acrylic pen now I have actually a canister of these that have a felt tip one and another one like this, which is more of a plastic tip. I do prefer the plastic tip, but I do not see where I tuck that. I recently uh, redid my, my space. And so, yeah. So if this runs out, um, I'm going to have to find it, but I thought this would be interesting to bring some elements to kind of black out and frame some of this. 
because like this skull right here already has some black elements in it and I might really lean into that fact. Yeah, this one looks like it's running out because I have used this one before because the felt one seems to pill the paper a lot quicker than this plastic one does. But I only have this in the one millimeter extra fine tip. I'll have to see on Amazon if they have a plastic tip that has, that's thicker. Mm, it's flowing out okay, so that's fine. That does take a little bit of time to dry though. I could come in and I might need to if I can't find my my little canister because it was this round canister so I should be able to see it from where I'm sitting <laughs> but if I can't find that then I'll have to come in with acrylic paint which is exactly the same thing so it doesn't take away from the secret element aspect and so let's make um, a really big denotion of these two skeleton faces And again, this middle section will probably have the most color because for me, it's the focus of the page. But we're going to black out that entire frame there and then we're going to black out all of the white space between these two skulls. And so that's the face that looks like a hat and then things on top of the hat. Okay, so that's how I'm going to treat the top there. And then this bottom could treat that like his face. So he has a very long face. Because so I'm just trying to figure out what's what. So let's do the edges so we can definitely see the difference between these two. I think that makes sense. And even though these are a flower element, I'm going to actually use that line there to be the bottom of his face. Because I don't see any clear distinction otherwise of what the bottom of his face is. Now, if you're doing something like this, you don't have to come in with an acrylic paint. I haven't used this as a secret weapon yet. And basically with these random color generator videos, I want to use a variety of different mediums just to show you that you can, but also show you that, okay, I knew um, I was going to use Distress Ink, some kind of Pentel pen and alcohol inks. And then knowing that, then I've been choosing my secret weapon as an additional element that the others wouldn't have brought to the table. So I've used Wink of Stella, I've used a white jelly roll, just because I can add some additional highlights or get some additional texture um, with very little effort. Because I mean, I could choose more colors of anything but I, I really do enjoy the element of 
limiting myself on a palette. Okay. It doesn't make him look like he has a funny face, but I'm okay with that. So let me show you where we're gonna use some of the Jelly Roll. And again, I think we made the executive decision that while we can use all of the colors in this middle section, we're only using brown and yellow on this out section. And I don't know, I might have to um, do some outlining uh, and bring some black in here, but we're not bringing any other color besides black and that uh, 85 here. So, Moonlight Jelly Roll is up next. And this um, is rather opaque, as well as kind of highlighty and chalky to me. So let's do something that's farthest away from us so that we're working this way so I don't drag my hand through it. And let's pick some similar elements because this flower kind of goes here. And we can kind of bring it down over here. And because it's rather opaque, I do want to be a little careful and not go over the black line. Because I do want the different sections to be very clear. Oh, but that color is really nice. Okay. And like right in there, I went over the black line, but I don't feel the need to go back over that. Oh, <laughs> luckily that's dry, if not a little tacky. But yeah, that I, I have done that on more than one occasion where I'm just not aware of what I'm putting down. It doesn't dry instantly, and then I drag myself through it, or at least my hand. Oh yeah, I think that actually looks really nice. Okay, so let me put some more color to paper. I will bring you back and uh, either show you the completed pages or just do some final touches with you guys, uh, just because otherwise, even though I'm not gonna concentrate on every single part of this picture, I do want to highlight um, some of the elements on here and then we'll just call it a day. All right, so for you guys, it'll be uh, in the next moment. For me, it'll definitely be a little bit down the road. I'll see you guys in just a sec. All right, guys, so this is actually me done. Now, I can see some spots like in here, up in here, and even within the skulls themselves, where I think I could add a little bit more color, but two things are happening. One, I'm bored. And two, my hand hurts. Now, I did have to come in with some black acrylic paint. I don't know where I put my other chocola because I know I have one more of these and two more of the felt tip pens. And it's, it's a very recognizable shape. It's in a tube and I don't know where it is. I'm looking around and I don't see it. So that's annoying. So I did have to come in with just some regular black acrylic paint, but that's still fine. It's still in the... Um, the vein of this, my secret weapon. I did use this to go ahead and outline this. As you can see, there's only the yellow and the brown alcohol marker in this background. This kind of purpley color is only in that aspect of the frame. And then um, I brought in some yellows, browns, and I think the yellow, brown, and then the moonlight uh, pen, that color combination, this looks like Mexican pottery to me. Now seeing this, and it, maybe it's the lighting, 
but I actually think I could have gone even heavier handed with this. But the thing with this is I'm not going to put it on top of this because it's going to muddy all of these colors. So um, in the future, I might go a little bit more heavy handed. I'm not actually very heavy handed when it comes to my Distress ink. Um, I definitely think you can see some of the purple here. I think it works well with the colors, but I think just from a coverage standpoint, I could have done a little better. There is um, a little bit in here. I know I put some in here, but you don't really see it. And I definitely uh, liked using the white of the page uh, to kind of bring in that sixth color, seventh color. So there's two, four, six, seventh color. Yeah, because we've got six mediums here. Sorry, this is from the video from just before. But I think it looks really good. Again, um, I could have gone a little further, but I'm I'm happy where it is. This is going to be a completed page for me. And it's not that I'm doing this for the film, like, oh, if I weren't doing a video, then I would have taken my time. No, because I know it's heavily detailed, I know there's going to be a little bit of time to it because it's just one big element. Uh, this is definitely a just sit down and get it done kind of picture for me, even if I took a little bit of a break and then came back to it. So this wouldn't have done any differently than um, if I were filming or not. Now something like this that has some little vignettes, although again the landscape one really has a lot of those. Um, I would treat these as individuals and I wouldn't actually look at the rest of the page and I would just color this, maybe do something like this where I have similar color elements throughout, but I wouldn't try to jump all over the page to, to fill in some of the space. This is where I uh, try to get some browns in this corner, some yellows in this corner, but then some of the alternate color just a little bit here and there just so that it does have some movement. I use the black here to really kind of um, anchor this and then I frame this out. I think had I colored that white in with some black and really done a heavy black edge on here, this would even be more of a focal point. But this ran out and I'm just, I'm, I'm tired with this picture. So we're gonna call it a completed page. I hope this kind of video was useful to you guys. Um, I do like this random color generator video, and so I will be doing it on a monthly basis. I will be switching up the mediums, I'll be switching up the types of books, just to show you that even if you have limited tools and you've got something that seems on the beginning of it very intimidating, it doesn't have to be uh, just depending on the way that you approach it. All right, guys, well, that's it for me for now. And as always, aloha.